Hello, everybody. Welcome. We are at the um, Canon Club, the Galleria Canon Club here in Old San Juan. Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. So, Jan de Sopo, myself, Jose Ramos Andrada. How are you, Kiko? I'm very fine. Very How are nice you to today? See oh, you. look at that outfit. Yeah, I'm, very I'm, nice. I'm all Sunday matching. Yeah. <laughs> Campeche's got his bow tie. He's going to yes. be here to welcome our guests. And we're celebrating a beautiful Sunday and uh, a beautiful day in Puerto Rico. Puerto and Rico, yes. Prepared for some, what is, how many shows have we done? Oh, I lost count already. Uh, you said it was 50 something. Something like that. We have <laughs> been doing this every single day wow. at six o'clock. That's amazing. For, I think, more than 50 shows. Yeah. We have had so many wonderful people joining <laughs> us, such talent, such... Well, we have uh, some more of joining us in we two have weeks. And, and the list is growing. It's endless. <laughs> it's growing, it's growing, growing, and, growing, and, growing, and, growing. And every day I think I sign up two more people. It's just wonderful. Just yeah, yeah. fabulous. Yeah. That, you know, so many uh, care to help us with this wonderful <laughs> idea of bringing music to all of you on this strange shutdown all theaters closed so this is our contribution to keep you know music alive many of these artists we've been featured have come here to the canon club or played uh, jazz also we john is the stanway society founder here in san juan puerto rico a lot of pianists that have come our way and some of them are not uh, some of them are just heard about us and we hope that in the future when this confinement and this social distancing uh, passes they can come and join us in the yeah. meantime we have a very special guest today today a Puerto uh, Rican, Puerto Rican <laughs> artist yes. the cellist uh, Rafael Figueroa from the prestigious Figueroa family from Puerto Rico and Rafael is the principal cellist of the Metropolitan Opera House Orchestra. Wow. This uh, wa That's one so of our special. Uh, prides and here. It's so it's wonderful. It's so wonderful. I, every time I play with him has been, you know, immemorable. I mean, it's really so wonderful. I believe he was here uh, last year playing yeah. with the festival. But without any further ado, where is Rafael Figueroa? Figueroa? Hello. Hello, Rafi. Hi. Hi. There Hi. you are. There you are. <laughs> Hi. How Hi. Are how are you? you? Oh, you're I looking good with right that. I'm from New York. It's, <laughs> it's a Sunday, Sunday afternoon. Sunday <laughs> afternoon. You're in New York. We're in Old San Juan. How's that? Yes, right. <laughs> I love your it's COVID you beard cut. That's Same good. Here. The COVID it, cut is, has to do yeah, with the hair, the has to do with the beard. The <laughs> quarantine beard. <laughs> <laughs> here we are. Well, wonderful so to see you and it's have good to you, be here with you today to have a little chit chat and talk about what's going on in your life. Uh, and how are you coping yeah. with all this? Uh, closed theaters, uh, no stages well, open. Well, it's, uh, it's difficult. It's not. It's not. It's not easy. It's, uh, every day seems. Every day I wake up in the morning, I'm hoping that it was a bad dream, <laughs> and, but it <laughs> seems to be uh, like a groundhog day, like the movie. It's just <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and um, yeah, it's uh, it's. It's a challenge, it, you know. I uh, we have we have two little kids, six and four, and so being in a New York apartment with two little kids, quarantine is not easy. And we we had to try to find ways of, of keeping them busy and and uh, also us keeping busy to you know some projects here and there. But um, we're coping. We just you know one day at a time. That's right. One day at a time. Absolutely. Yeah. So do you say, oh, today I'm going to practice a little while, or I'm going to do, what do you, what do you, what do you do about your playing? Good question. That's a very good question. And uh, it's, it's really funny because even I've shared this 
same question with a lot of my colleagues and friends. Some of them decided, oh, I'm not going to touch my instrument for three months or, so, <laughs> or something like that. I, I can't be like that. You I'm can't not do that. Like that. No. So it's like starting all over again. Yeah. yeah. I decided to just, uh, you know, uh, uh, challenge myself to do s things that I normally these days don't have the time to do uh, because of the schedule of the Metropolitan Opera is, is so uh, absorbing. Hectic. Uh, sure. Yeah, so I, I decided that through the entire the entire uh, uh, lockdown, I would uh, practice uh, things like the Bach suites. Uh, okay. I've revived all of them. All six of them. I've been working on them, working on them in detail and everything. And and then my latest uh, challenge was I, I I have not because of being in the Metropolitan Opera for 25 years. I have not learned a new cello concerto, uh, added a new cello concerto for my repertoire. Here's your so chance. I, uh, I went like, let's do it. And I started working on the Shostakovich second concerto, which is an enormous piece. And um, I'm right in the middle of it. I'm memorizing it now. That's great. Yeah. And things like, if I don't do that, I, I will go nuts. Yeah. <laughs> well. That's what we musicians, that what we do. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, you that's had, why Kiko's got a full schedule, yeah, teaching, teaching, and he's... Uh, right. Uh, yeah. And yet he manages to get down here about two minutes of six every day, <laughs> which makes me a little on the crazy <laughs> side, because <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of ready a little bit before that. And Daudis is already sitting at the engineer's table over yeah. there with earphones and little lights blinking and whatnot. It's just complicated. And uh, yeah, you know, we're, we're trying to do it right and but what give a good quality. But this is extraordinary quality. what you're doing. Well, it's, it, it's, it's very exciting to, to be in touch with all of you, all the artists uh, through this media and, and be able to communicate this way right. and keep, keep the world, our world going. Exactly. It's very exciting. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, One way. I think what is happening and what we are very proud to, to do is to bring musicians uh, home to people's, uh, their homes, where they can actually meet you and uh, see you close up and hear you talk about what your life as a musician <laughs> is like, what you've been doing, what you're going through now that your stages are closed and yeah. uh, what you're hearing, planning, and how you're handling it, because uh, that's a challenge, I think. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yes. No, it's, it's, and, and yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, how can I say it? Um, there's uh, th that, that uncertainty, that every, there are all these questions that you cannot answer. Answer, when, when nobody knows have the answer. This, yeah. Sometimes we have these meetings and we talk about, well, w when can we open? We're, well, there's no vaccine yet. How can you open, have an right. opera? It's impossible. Yeah. So, yeah. It's so it's a, so it's it's a little bit challenging that, yeah. that way to be able to plan ahead. You know, um, we've never been like this, and uh, particularly no. you in the music field, you usually plan two, three years down the down the way. Right. Exactly. And at this point. Uh, I'm sure everybody's thinking, wow, uh, the programs I didn't do this spring, are we going to switch them to next fall, or what are we going to be doing after that, or do we pick up the yeah. same old pattern that we had? Uh, it's, there's a lot of big changes going on here. For I example, you yeah. usually go to Verbier, right, in the summer. So. Yeah, well, I, I, I stopped doing the, the coaching in Verbier for a number of years now, but it's, it's actually Dora, my wife, who that so I do go to Berbier every summer to visit oh, okay. with the family with, I with her I what see. what I have been doing for the last almost 10 years uh, is the Pacific Music Festival in Sapporo Japan oh yes 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 it's a similar festival they're all based on the same uh, concept like right. Tanglewood you know uh, it's, it's in, it has a basic educational purpose right uh, but it's um, in this case the Pacific is divided basically in, in two halves. It, the first half of the festival 
it's the, the faculty that is there is a European. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it's called the you know, Pacific Music Festival U Europe or something like that, mm -hmm. PMF Europe. And it's basically musicians from the Berlin, Berlin Philharmonic, Vienna, and uh, maybe another orchestra. And then they go away. Then the, the, the crew from the United States arrives, and that's where I come in. And we have people from the Metropolitan Opera, from, from the Chicago Symphony, from Boston, from San Francisco, from Cleveland Orchestra. So, so you know, it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a great festival. It's a big, big, big uh, moment in, in my summer every year. And um, this uh, this summer, um, unfortunately, was canceled, and I, w I was going to be a soloist again there. Uh, we were going to do the uh, the Haydn Sinfonia Concertante, yeah, uh, which is for, it's for for four soloists for for uh, um, uh, oboe, violin, wonderful. bassoon, and cello. Oh. And I was preparing that, and that was in my music stand. And I, well, okay, well, I got canceled back in the drawer. Right. <laughs> What are you gonna do? Yeah. No, you. So, for live with those, it. Huh? Yeah, you have to you have live to with it with and make plans to make figure plans out how out you don't go crazy. <coughs> you do what other else things. You're gonna do. You have to do other things, and you this is the challenge right. of us for yeah. us creative people. Yeah. It really is a challenge. Right. And um, yeah, uh, amazing. That we're, we're all managing, and it's it, it's very interesting for us because we're having a chance to talk to you all and every day we have somebody new and everybody every day somebody gives us another idea of how they're coping right but you know it's very interesting because this gives us an opportunity and many of the viewers that are not familiar with you to know mm -hmm. who are you who is rafael figueroa who <laughs> tell us about you uh, tell us how you started of course you know we all know you come from the figueroa family but you're an individual. You had your own trajectory, and it would be very. In this is a great time to learn your biography. <laughs> sure. To share. Well, how much time do we have? <laughs> well, we, we have we plenty of time. Don't uh, worry. We usually go till about six forty-five, and yeah, so yeah. Uh, th this is time. interesting. And I don't think um, uh, you know people can get on uh, uh, the internet and check out who you are with the Google, but yeah. hey, it's so much nicer to hear it from your very own lips. Well, uh, let me see if I can put it in, in a sort of like in a nutshell. Uh, uh, of course, you know, being from my, my family was the, the, was the biggest uh, influence in terms of, you know, me com being a boy coming from Puerto Rico playing the cello. That, that's not very usual in Puerto Rico. But anyway, uh, being the, the fourth of four brothers, I was the youngest, and, and my father, brilliant violinist, he put a violin under my, under my chin, and then, you know, of course, he had <laughs> Before all, you got all a all bottle. three boys. To, <laughs> yeah, and, and I started with the violin when I was five, and as much as I love it, because I adore the violin, and the violin repertoire is all in my head, um, I, I didn't practice much. And and it was difficult for my father to to keep a continuity because he was very busy trying to make a living for, for the family. So one day at the Adekasas Festival, I was about eight years old, and I was there with my brother Epi. He's the only only brother who still lives in Puerto Rico, and uh, who did not go into music. Um, he and I were playing. At the, at the rehearsal of the Casas Festival, the, the, the theater, the big theater in the University of Puerto yeah. Rico. Right. right. And it, it was the old Casas um, Festival Orchestra, with right. this ad hoc group of people from all over the world. And my dad was sitting in the, in the violin section, and I could see him from there with going like, this, sit down, sit down. Because we we're, were just playing around, running around the whole the entire place. <laughs> and <laughs> my, I remember it like if it was yesterday that all of a sudden they stopped rehearsing what they were rehearsing and out came this man with hair up to here, white hair, very thin, very tall, with a cello. And he sat down and started to play the Tchaikovsky, the Rococo variations. And the next thing I know is that I have been paralyzed practically 
uh, holding the, the back of a, a chair, one of the seats, that I was like, oh my God, I was completely mesmerized. And at the end of the rehearsal, we were in the car with my uncles, and I told my dad, you know, Pop, I, I think I would like to play that instrument. And my father was like really, really cool. He didn't say, oh, he just said, oh, okay. All I know is that as soon as we got home, he ran to the phone and called my uncle, quick, get a cello now. <laughs> <laughs> How old and were you? I started. I was eight. Then I started with, uh, basically started with my uncle. And, and at that time, the Conservatory of Music in Puerto Rico did not have the special, uh, the special department for, for strings for, for, for children. That the didn't preparatory. Exist. Preparatory. The, yeah, the conservatory. Preparatory but I was introduced as a special student, and I, I studied with uh, uh, Odnopotov. Adolfo Odnopotov, who was um, uh, from the, um, the, there are two brothers, Ricardo and Adolfo. Ricardo was a very prominent uh, violinist. Uh, violinist. And Adolfo had been a, stu a student of Feuermann, actually. Oh. Ooh, and uh, so, you know, the, the lineage was amazing. So. so I studied with them for a while. Then um, later, Odnopotov got sick, or uh, I remember that, that he, he retired, and then later on, he passed away. Uh, in between, there was a Frenchman who came to Puerto Rico, Francois Bayot. Francois Bayot, Bayot uh, was in Puerto Rico for like two years, maybe not more than that, maybe three years. Yeah. And then came the Spaniard, Joaquin Vidachea, who, who was my, really my main teacher until I left Puerto Rico. He, I owe him a lot because he was, he, he was, he was a top teacher, but he, he taught me a lot. And he was the, the one who studied with this, this man back here, Gaspar, Gaspar Casado. Gaspar Casado. And yeah. Casado. Uh -huh. Yeah, say it prominently so, so that, that people can get the name. Basically, Gaspar. that was basically my, my makeup until then, until I went to Indiana University where I studied with Gary Hoffman and then with Jan Starker, who was in, in the middle, right there. Right. <laughs> Was is consider I consider him my 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 mentor my uh, um, my main teacher. I think of him every day. Every day I pick up a cello. I'm thinking of the things that he taught me. And, and uh, so I spent six years as a student at Indiana, and then the seventh year I was in the faculty teaching. Uh, Starker gave me a position in the faculty. And then I had this moment where I said, I have to leave Indiana. I cannot start a career from the middle of the Midwest. I have to come to New York or Boston or something. So I moved to New York in 1987 and began doing all kinds of things, all, all kinds of uh, projects and be trying to keep the, my solo playing and solo concer concertos and recitals. And, but doing a lot of chamber music. You, and you formed a trio, with, uh, right? You formed a trio. I had a trio for five years, yes. Mm -hmm. And the Amadeus trio. The Amadeus uh -huh. trio. And uh, with uh, Jimmy Barbagallo, yeah. rest in peace. Actually, they're, they're both, they both passed away now. Uh, uh, Tim, Tim Baker was a violinist. And uh, I played with Orpheus Chamber Orchestra for about 11 years. Meanwhile, I was doing, I was still doing competitions and things. I was like pushing myself to, and um, I could, you know, actually I consider myself e extremely lucky and, and blessed because <coughs> I had told myself back when I was in my mid twenties that by, by age 35, I, I wanted to either be very established a soloist, or I was. I wanted to, to get a job in a good orchestra or a teaching, and boom, that's exactly what happened. I was 34 and got the Metropolitan Opera. And first and cello. I've been there for 25 wow. years. Principal cello. <laughs> that's, that's great. I've been there for tw 25 years. Wow. Oh, my word. Tell I me. Didn't have any, I'm, any curious. White hairs. <laughs> I'm curious to know who was that cellist that caught your attention? And was that Paul Tortelier? Tortelier. Paul Tortelier, great Paul choice. Tortelier. Paul Tortelier, exactly. I remember when he came. And you know, because he was he was a socialist. He was uh, anti everything America. So he never went never went to America. Actually, he was he was uh, only at the Casals Festival, 
And then uh, later, uh, this is about tw tw exactly 25 years after that time I heard him in Puerto Rico. I was eight years old. 25 years later, Jerry Schwartz convinced, convinced him to come to, to play uh, as a soloist in uh, um, Mostly Mozart. Uh -huh. in New York, mm -hmm. and he did, and he played the, the Tchaikovsky also again, and I heard him play Rococo. there 25 years later, and he played just as just as magnificent, uh, magnificent. Yeah. it was incredible, and <laughs> this is the, the one of the things that I could kick myself, because at that time, you know, I should, I should have gone to him and talked to him and told him the story, yeah. And <laughs> because and, of you, but I, I got, I got shy about it and I didn't do it. And, and now I, I should really kick myself for not having gone to him and, and told him. You know. <laughs> Don't you hate that when that happens? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's amazing so, so what. I, I learned my lesson. The impact I learned that my lesson. these people can have and have had on us, you know, uh, these, these big figures. Did you meet Casals or were you too young yeah. for. I did. I was. About, I was about 10 years old yeah. when, when um, I'm not even sure which magazine it was at that time. At that time, you know, I, I was just 10 years old and uh, it may, may have been the Life magazine. Mm -hmm. I went to Puerto Rico to do a big piece, a very big piece on Casals and uh, the Conservatory of Music. And then they had the students of of Noposov, right. go to Casals' house uh -huh. and play for him and take photographs. And I remember I was uh, waiting in line my turn to go take my cello out and go to the balcony. He's there in his recliner with his pipe, probably going like, get me out of here. <laughs> 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 and he was very, he was very nice. He was a very nice old man. And, and I played some etudes for him when I was 10 years old, and that's another way, another time that I could kick myself for not having a photo of that. Yeah. I, and I have, I have looked, I have uh, s researched in, in, in all kinds of archives to try to find that photo. Because but at that time, we didn't have photographers. Uh, uh, smartphones to take photos. Yeah, we weren't so photo conscious, conscious as we are yeah, now. Oh, well. yeah, exactly. It's like, yeah. uh, you know, just uh, just a, a few days ago, somebody asked me if, if you know, uh, uh, I was asked if I had a, 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 a photo in action, taking a lesson with Starker. No, I don't, you know, but <laughs> in the 80s, nobody had a, a smartphone or taking right. pictures. No, and you, ne you never thought of doing that, and, and, and it actually was considered rude. Yeah, yeah, would you mind if I take a picture of us? And people would have said, <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Exactly. But yeah. today, now, people don't even ask. They just run around and start clicking. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And yeah. Uh, I, I'm kind the of caught between the two generations of being the polite, do you mind if we record right. this? Or, or right. Uh, Absolutely. But then right. again, it ends up on Facebook or some other thing that's supposed to do us good. So, but this is interesting. Right. Yeah, and it's, it's time to change. And now, here we are entering into this new world of uh, uh, virtual uh, yeah. enjoyment with each other and sharing things. And and uh, we're on the brink of some very interesting new developments yes. in all of this. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. I think uh, actually, you know, that you mentioned that I, I think that well, first, first of all, every time in 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 the history of humanity that something like this has happened, when when we reach the other side, the world has changed. Yes, uh, yes. absolutely. Know, and and the world will change. Some things will change for the better, some not. Uh, in our business and in, in the, the music business, uh, especially because until there's a vaccine. And until that vaccine reaches the entire planet, um, it, you know, we are going to be challenged that way. So I think this, what you guys are doing, this is, is like, a, um, it's just the beginning. It, it's going to yeah. be, there's going to be a lot of this. It's going to, right. There's going to be a lot of, of, of performances, virtual performances. Um, I don't even know how or, you know, but but I know that this the media and and this uh, um, this technology is going to be a very significant part of it. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. Uh, the absolutely. world is changing. Yes. 
we are changing yeah. with the world and I think it's a wonderful mm -hmm. uh, challenging time yeah. and uh, yes. I'll tell you Absolutely. we feel challenged yeah. and uh, let's hear something yeah let's hear let's hear you play perform mm -hmm. perform. something for us yeah we've got a little great tell us what we're gonna hear what you're gonna hear uh, first of all let me tell you where, where this was this was recorded um, at a live performance in a music series, a chamber music series that, uh, that's called Parlance, Parlance Chamber Concerts. Uh, Michael Parloff was the principal uh, flute player of the Metropolitan Opera for many, many years. And after he retired, he started this series. And this series has actually become a very important venue in, in, in the area, in the New York area. And uh, the, we play the concerts at this church that has a magnificent acoustic. And uh, for this particular concert, he, this, this was a, a, a long program of ma many, many people playing short pieces and things. It was a little bit of like a, a, a memory of, of other concerts that have happened there. I, I, I played this piece. This piece is the, the Suite for Cello Solo by Gaspar Casado. Uh, the man over there. <laughs> um, it was written in, in the mid 1920s, and has become a uh, pretty much a staple of, of, of in our repertoire of, of unaccompanied cello. This is, this is the last movement of the suite. It's, it's titled uh, Finale Danza. Okay, let's hear it. Wonderful. Wonderful. Let's follow it.
of the room. Dowdy's is on the engineering chair and Kiko and I are here nice. and a couple of bird friends, good people. Stevie's over there. And birds included. Birds included. Birds included. Yeah. Yeah. They, they applaud too. Yeah. Oh, they own the place. <laughs> <laughs> they own me, that's for sure. I, 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 miss, I miss you guys. I miss, I miss the place. And I yeah, know. I, I, it was like wonderful. Like I think there. you were here. You know, yes, last that's summer. The, that's Weren't a good here? thing. You're here with us. That's wonderful. Anyway, yeah. um, this is, it's, it's really an interesting thing I'll add uh, to your story that how um, this all got started is that we at the Cannon Club were having so many really interesting people drop in because we have two Steinways side by side, we have two guitars, right. we have a bass fiddle, and we were having music every night, and the music was so wonderful that I asked Dowdy's. I said, Dowdy's, we, we need to we need to wire this place up so we can share this yeah. and put it out on Facebook and YouTube and all this, all the things that happen at the at the Cannon Club, and that was uh, kind of completed by oh the first of March, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. we got this COVID thing. And here we were the, with an almost completed sound system in the actual Cannon Club itself with the two pianos. So it was very obvious to us, to me, when this clampdown came and everybody lost their stages. I think we just finished a concert with Ian Hobson and we'd had, we'd, we had a whole full schedule. Like every oh two yeah. weeks we were having something that we were, um, passing around the world and uh, I said well I guess we're just gonna have to go with the times mm -hmm. and start talking to people virtually and here we are yeah no, I, I'm telling you it's, it's uh, I, you, you guys are doing something really wonderful really wonderful thank you thank you well we're going with the times and who knows where the times are gonna take us on <laughs> 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 because it, this is gonna stay with us and hopefully the uh, possibilities of improving our you I mean you look great I don't know what you're recording on your uh, side but you look yeah. terrific and oh thank you uh, we hear you very <laughs> clear yeah, and we hear the you the the and, and I like yeah. I like that we can combine conversing with you and learning about you and hearing your side of the story and what you're dealing with but also being able to put on some very professionally recorded uh, YouTube uh, recordings that you mm -hmm. have, so that makes it fun too. And that's that's very ex exciting. And yeah, uh, I was very. I don't think we uh, we yeah. have never uh, done this type of thing. I mean, of course, there are interviews with artists and they feature their playing and their performances, mm -hmm. uh, either live or in. But on a regular basis, day by day, you know, this is very, very this unique, is a first. And very and exciting. As a I'm a first. not sure. Yeah. I know that uh, many of you musicians are recording regularly. In fact, soon we are going to be having <coughs> Eric Hemme, uh, who decided mm -hmm. on his own that he would record a one to two minute piano piece every day, which he did and sent around the world. And, and now he stopped it. I mean. You know, it's you begin to run out of pieces and time to practice. <laughs> yeah. them, so. But we're still going. <laughs> we're still we're going. So going. <laughs> and thank goodness you know, we have wonderful people like you who say, oh, we'll go with you. I'll, I'll join you. 
What's uh, oh, this is, 20 minutes this of is, this my is time? This is such a pleasure. I've been looking forward to this for days yeah. and days well, it's now. Great. Right. We, we too. We too. And it's just we so exciting. Exciting. Right. And um, I it's just, uh, I put calls out and I just heard from Justino Diaz this morning. Oh. And he said, of course, I'll come on. Uh, he's uh, 80 now. Excellent. He said, you know, I don't have to go anywhere. 80. I said, no, you just sit home with your iPhone and we'll right. tune in. And so it's easy once, and now that we've got this vMix platform, because it is going out on Facebook, it's going out on Instagram, it's going out on YouTube, it's going out everywhere. And some days right. we're absolutely shocked to see we have five, six, seven hundred viewers. Right. So it is making, it's making a difference. And it's bringing Absolutely. you all very, out very happy. to audiences that you wouldn't have, except for the fact that we're pushing a couple of buttons here. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Plugging in our earphones and keeping the bird quiet and <laughs> enjoying wow. time with you, Rafi. This Thank is so you wonderful. so much. It has been a wonderful yeah, interview. Yeah, this is great. I love this. Thank you. I, I, I really appreciate that very much, you know, um, Everything that you guys are doing, yeah, and 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 Jan, you 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 know you're you, uh, I don't know how to say it, but the, it, it the support that you give the musicians and and, and artists, it is there's no way of putting a price on that. This is right. is amazing, oh, I, and, and I, don't I even really think appreciate. It. It just comes we all appreciate it. We all appreciate it. So and I think much. it started with my father, with mm -hmm. that wonderful piano. Mm -hmm. And I, he said, well, I think I'm going to ask my mm -hmm. children who wants it. And I said, I'm the firstborn. I don't care what else mm -hmm. you give away of your possessions, but I want the piano. And I didn't know at that time. I just had an instinct yeah. that it would bring wonderful things to the gallery, to my life to expanding because I've always loved music and I did play the piano but I chose finally to go into painting and sculpture which I've done mm -hmm. for most of my life but now I turn to you so I'm not a, <laughs> an artist uh, a musician at all but I certainly love and have always loved the music and having all you come over the last 30 years meeting you all and Thank you. Being yeah. part of your rehearsals yes. and then concerts, it's wonderful. It's just been a wonderful thing in my life. And, so. and, and, and to have the brilliant Kiko there with you. <laughs> That's the very special. Uh, next it's interview, we have to talk about uh, our lives when we, we both were like very small. Yes. <laughs> I bet you were rascals, the whole yeah, bunch of you. I remember. K Kiko, you know, it's been in my life for my since. Since ever since, yeah. since I have memory, you know, right. we're, we're children, you know, <laughs> yeah. and uh, and wow, wow, what a career he has had, you know, <laughs> and what a brilliant pianist, a brilliant musician. Thank you, thank you, and a really nice guy. Thank you, <laughs> <laughs> and fun too, and so generous to yeah. share the chair with me and pursue the um, direction of this idea of having you guys on Absolutely. every day to talk to and share with our viewers uh, a little insight to your lives now, yeah. what you've been doing, what you're doing now, what your hopes and plans are, and how we're coping. Right. It's, uh, mm -hmm. it's kind of a special time for all of us. Anyway. Exactly. So anyway, we are about to close, but we want to invite everybody for tomorrow's uh, concert interview. We have Miriam Conti, uh, the Argentinian pianist. I hope she's going to play some tangos for us. Oh, of course she will. Wonderful. Uh, Tuesday, Gustavo Awali, the baritone from Argentina. Also, uh, Ardian uh, Pack. Ardian. He's, he's, uh, was the winner of our festival uh, two years ago, the Stanway Society winner. And we have Jeffrey Swan, brilliant American pianist, who is going to join us this week. And Eteri and Japaritza, the great and uh, Georgian pianist. And it goes on also. and on. And it goes on and on. We are, on are on having on such a wonderful, wonderful response time. from wow. our musicians. And Very impressive. If people are learning about this. And to you viewers, if there's anybody on your list that you want to share this with, 
please, the more people that hear us and see what we're trying to do here, it means so much to us. Yes. So from Campeche, <laughs> who Campeche. Want specifically to say <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> Until the next time. Until the next time. We'll be Thank together. you, guys. Mm. Thank you so much. Thank well, you so much for safe. being with us. You too. Thank you so Thank much. You. <laughs> Thank you. See you Bye. soon, hopefully. Mm -hmm.